So first, um, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Craig uh, Smith to, I'm sorry, Craig Scott to come forward uh, to talk about his position uh, in opposition to the endorsements uh, uh, that were made, and uh, then we'll have uh, uh, Jonathan is here. Will talk about uh, in favor uh, of the endorsement slate that was done. So, Star Craig, please come forward. Thank you very much for being here today. And I'll give you like a one minute and thirty seconds. Just kick me. Okay? <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm Craig Scott. I'm from Vallejo. Um, I'd like to thank you for having us and letting me speak and other people here for with me. And I'd also like to thank um, Assemblywoman Susan Bonilla for being here and taking the time to consider this and think about it and hear our um, points that we'd like to bring up. Um, I'm here and there are other people in this room here who are with me who are asking for Susan Bonilla and the Solano Democratic Central Committee to reconsider and rescind their endorsement of Anthony Summers for Vallejo City Council. And um, before I go into the points as to why, I would like to point out that Assemblywoman Susan Bonilla has had an excellent track record on LGBT issues. She's been a strong supporter of women's issues. And we in no way, or I in no way, want to disparage her record and her commitment to these issues. And, but this endorsement, I think, is kind of like outside, and it's perhaps was made without full information about um, Anthony Summers' records, record. Um, Anthony Summers has stated clearly that he's anti-choice. In the Solano Democratic Council um, questionnaire, he was asked if he supported the Democratic platform, and he responded, he said, yes, I read the platform, which is good news to some people on the platform. Yes, I have read the platform and I, am very, and I am in agreement with the vast majority of it, with the exception of abortion, and I am very concerned about assisted death. As with the death, death penalty, I am opposed to the taking of life. I believe in supporting life. Many persons are enraged about the taking of unborn life, but lack concern for the children who are born into poverty. My position is more pro-living. That position in itself is very troubling. Um, also, he's had a history of active participation in homophobic policies and events in Vallejo. He was very outspoken and actively lobbied to have the, the Vallejo uh, School Board undo its anti-bullying policies. And uh, when a gay candidate was running for uh, city council, he badgered that candidate for just being gay. Um, apparently, Mr. Summers has also had a, a road to Damascus conversion recently. And he'd like people that he's no longer holds these views. And it just feels like it's a you know, conversion on the road to the polls for us. And his track record and his statements and the vitriol with which he has conducted himself in his past is very, very troubling. If he's elected to city council, he's going to be a very divisive council person as our being here is evidence that it's his candidacy is very problematic. And with that, we just ask Assemblywoman Susan Bonilla and the, the Solano Democratic Council to reconsider and, and retract their endorsement of this man. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to try Can to I answer Can I take your minute and a half left? <laughs> Actually, you questions should be oh, Okay. Yeah. So, so you want to fill your minute and a half? I mean, you can no, I, 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 no, just thank you. It's wonderful being back in the Union Hall as broke in the UAW community. He's going to have you at the end. Public I minute. can't use his minute and a half? No. no. Okay. At the end, we'll get it. Thank you, Craig. Uh, uh, Jonathan uh, uh, Gordon is uh, here to uh, talk about, uh, uh, to support the endorsement uh, that was made. Thank you, Jonathan, for being here. Uh, thank you. And I'd like
like to thank everyone from Vallejo who uh, came out today to attend this event. Um, I, I need to make a statement that uh, I'm not representing uh, the club in my speech. Uh, the events have uh, divided, uh, divided the club profoundly. Uh, in fact, uh, the next meeting, which will be the week after the uh, uh, election, uh, the club is planning to uh, uh, make a motion to uh, uh, reprimand me for my uh, endorsing Anthony. Uh, also, I believe that they're going to uh, not elect me as president again. So I want to thank everyone that I've met over the years uh, in my capacity as president. Um, I think that you need to know a little bit about my background. I haven't necessarily uh, been very verbal about this, but uh, I'm a blogger on daily costs, and more specifically on uh, the Street Profits uh, subgroup. The Street Profits subgroup is a religious group, and we talk about the, the confluence of religion and politics. Um, I identify myself as an atheist, but yet I'm spiritual. And I recognize uh, how many people value uh, religion, and, and religion has a, a large role in people's lives. And so therefore I have a bit of tolerance, and a bit, a, a bit of, uh, uh, I'm an active listener, and I try to listen to people very carefully and understand what their intentions are. Um, so when many people, a few people have uh, questioned uh, my sanity, questioned whether I've been drugged or influenced or coerced uh, into my decision to endorse <laughs> Anthony, um, it's not the case. It's just I have the ability to, to listen and I like people and I don't like division. Uh, I think that there's value in, in, in every person. Um, when we had the, the two meetings prior um, to the endorsement process, we did not have a quorum. We had no quorum. Uh, we had new members, and by our bylaws, uh, the bylaws state that uh, it takes 90 days uh, for the new members after they've paid their dues to become voting members. Um, so essentially, other than having discussions over the issues, uh, there was not a, a platform uh, or, or the, the meetings were not convened in such a way as that, that could, the club could vote on the endorsement. So in a sense, uh, my deciding to, to vote for Anthony is my decision, and I own it. Uh, as part of my wanting to, to endorse Anthony, I made a mental note to myself that I need to, to take responsibility for this and I need to stay with Anthony and work with Anthony over the course of his tenure on city council. Um, what I ended up doing, Anthony came to our meeting cold and I had no, uh, I did not know he was coming. And he asked, he introduced himself, he asked, he said, I'm gonna be seeking the endorsement. And I advised him that the endorsement ultimately is the, is the central committee's responsibility and that I don't have control over it. I spent time talking to him and I spent a great deal of time working with him, going over uh, the platform, our economic vitality plan, and the Municipal Quality Index. These became the key documents and questions that I tried to ask him, and I spent about, say, six, seven hours and asked him on specific issues. And based on my conversation, I felt that he was not going to block uh, the, the issues that are brought up in this. Uh, boy, the time runs by fast. I want to thank everyone for listening to me, and uh, uh, thank you. Oh, one last.
There is one video here. This is a video of the school board meeting. I have 20 copies. And I, I, I'd like to leave this up here for anyone who would like to see the school board meeting. It's one of the issues of contention right here. And so here's copies for you. Yes, Dave. Who produced that video? The faith organization. So Anthony Summers produced that? Yes. OK. Because it seems highly edited. That could be right. a conversation. Yeah. You can, we'll have the time later. That's okay. Thank you very much. Seeing none, then we're to the point where uh, we will allow for the public comment that we had previously talked about. Um, and so we're going to let speakers talk for two minutes. Um, I think, let me ask one question. Are there any people here who are going to comment on something other than the Vallejo City Council situation? All right, seeing none, then what I will do is I will ask people who support the current endorsed slate and then alter alternate between support and oppose. So at least as long as there's people to alternate from. Uh, so uh, since I asked the opposition to speak first earlier, I'll ask first, is there somebody who would like to support uh, the current slate who would like to talk for two minutes? <laughs> yeah? And I will give you a 30, I'll give you a 30 second and a 10 second one. So I, I I think I want to clarify, I'm not necessarily speaking on behalf of the slate as much as I am about uh, on behalf of the people that made the slate, because I trust John Riley, I trust Susan Bonilla. Uh, in fact, I uh, produced the Prop 8 play uh, just recently here in Contra Costa County, and Susan was uh, my highest dollar value uh, supporter. Uh, so. I really appreciate what she did in supporting what uh, we did in this county. As far as Tony Summers, um, I am interested in learning more about him, and uh, I am offering up my, I would like to have a conversation. I, I think we need to actually have more of a conversation and actually get in the room and talk with him and other uh, his supporters. Because I, I believe that we're, we, we're coming from a very strong standpoint, and I think that when we open up the dialogue, that we're able to move us forward. And instead, I, I understand that where, when somebody has said something in the past, but I also know that this on this particular issue, in the last 10 years, I have seen people that were so adamantly opposed to us move towards our side. And they may not be, you know, they may not march in our gay pride parade, but yet at the same time, they are willing to sit down and have a conversation with us, whereas 10 years ago they wouldn't. So that is something that I want to be a part of. And for my background, like I said, I've been uh, an e-board uh, representative for, uh, for, for uh, the Mias district. I also, uh, in 2005, I quit my job at Microsoft. <laughs> Because as an activist, to force them to change their bill in the state legislature. So I definitely understand where you're coming from, and I agree with you. So we need to do something. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yes. I, I heard that you were going Candidate named Anthony Summers? And three others, yes. Okay. And when someone else spoke, they said something about a quorum at that meeting. So was it a legitimate endorsement? My, that, 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 oh, I mean, okay. they're not, that's, that's not, not even just, I can say as far as I know, everything about that process was legit and per the bylaws. That was my question. Um, so people are here for uh, generally other reasons, as far as I understand. And before, I know some people have to start to go. If you have your Dem 2014 packet, I'm happy to deliver it for you or give it to Ford to take back to the state party office. So feel free to give me those on your way out. Now somebody speak uh, in opposition. Please. I'll cut right to the chase. Um, there is evidence that uh, Anthony Summers has been in the past anti-choice, anti-gay rights, and would be willing to eliminate much of the separation between church and state. And this has occurred within the past year in some cases. Uh, there's a lot of rumors going around. I'm trying to get the, the facts. Was information about Mr. Summers' willingness 
to uphold the party's core values, misleading or ignored or withheld. I'd like to know how long he's actually been, that he and the other people have been uh, a registered Democrat. Uh, did anyone check at one point, Mr. Summers wrote in his own document, he was a registered Democrat for 35 years. Later, someone else said it's for what's the truth? What's going on? Are there any minimum requirements these clubs ought to use? And what's the criteria for selecting a person for an endorsement? And I'd like to know why the Central Committee hasn't released how their members voted they're supposed to. And I'd also like to say I like Mr. Riley, but I'm wondering why Mr. Riley, who's a member of the Central Committee, who runs a PAC called Jump Start, is sending out materials that are attacking fellow Democrats by name. And this is what it looks like, and he names it. Uh, he names these people, and I don't think that's appropriate for fellow Democrats to be doing that. Thank you very much, and I also want to thank you for making the suggestion that we allow this time and being persistent about it, so I changed my mind. So thank you very much for doing that as well. Uh, somebody who'd like to speak in favor? I Please. Actually, J.D., if you don't mind. Yeah, I'll yield to the lady, as long as I speak next. Opposition, then. Amy Dean, I am the um, parliamentarian for the Solano County Democratic Central Committee. Um, and I, I just want to speak to the process that we went through and assure everyone in the room that it was my third or fourth time being responsible for the management of the process. And for those of you who know me, you know I don't screw around with that. Uh, I am a CEQA attorney, so process is everything to me. Uh, I want to assure you that the vote was very clean, that uh, there were 24 possible votes. Mr. Summers got 13, the bare minimum needed for the endorsement. Every Democrat, and yes, I personally checked on the registration of all of the potential um, endorsees, and I personally sent out communications to each of them. Not everyone responded. As you might know, Katie Meisner is not eligible for the endorsement because she, she's subject to the Hatch Act. And one other candidate for Vallejo did uh, respond and appear before us. As has always been the case, we base our decisions on the, que the answers to the questionnaire, which are revisited. You guys need to be quiet while I'm talking. Okay. Um, and you see, that's how I run a show. Thank you. Okay. Um, and uh, where was I? Oh, there's a fairly lengthy questionnaire. Everyone has to fill them fill them out. Um, and so we review those in advance of the of the endorsement meeting, and then we hear from the candidates and base our decision on that. So it was a very clean vote. I, I do want to make sure that there's no question about that. I'm happy to answer questions afterwards. One final thing, I will say that almost everyone in this room came to this party after some kind of struggle, just like this one, and we stayed. And we're very hopeful that you guys stay. We're, I'm very thrilled that you're engaged, and I, I hope we can work together in the future on things that are critical to us all. Thank you. Person in opposition. I know y'all want to go home. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. Um, I will talk. I wrote out my little thoughts on a little piece of scratch paper because people know me know I'm very verbal. Um, but there's a, a love quote, and one of them are um, speak even if your voice shakes and speak truth to power. Um, I've been pro labor since I was 18 years old, John. <laughs> Um, to, up to my medical retirement at 53 years old um, with my health and dental. Um, to, well, going to my story about why I'm so passionately pro labor, but you'll just trust me on that. Um, but after working my tush off, people who know me, for about 25 years for a local Democratic um, party, a lot of the George Miller and Barbara Boxer signs, I put most of those up all over, yada, yada, yada. Although I've done more local, local lately. Um, I listen hard to Jonathan and Dana, and I still don't understand how this could happen. Um, how we could have endorsed someone with a history of um, anti-democratic core values um, that have already been mentioned, when we have a former vice president, a 
of our Democratic Club and a former treasury with a long, long, I'm talking decades long history of working their butt off for our city. It just boggles my mind. There has been a long civil war, John, in our community, which I think is the greatest place in the country to live. Um, with, and it's a very, huh? Okay, I'll drop it up. Um, with this, this big money and big labor and chamber of commerce on one side and the progressives on the other, and it needs to stop. I don't think what I call big out of control labor is doing more damage to Democrats and labor in our community than it realizes to the point where it's become a joke and at best, and hate politics at worst. Um, this conversion on the way to the polls, I think, is what's going on here versus the history of long work, and I hope it never happens anywhere else in this state. Thank you for listening. In support, please. I support the candidates um, and for a lot of reasons. I've been active in organized labor and Democratic Party probably for 35 years in Apple's final counties. And, but to, uh, to start off with, the gentleman that brought up that uh, jumpstart Hawaii mailer, every, and naming the candidates, uh, everything in that mailer was true. Nothing was untrue. That, no. But yeah. I have the floor. Yeah. Now, on the other issue, the other issue is they've got an organization started, Rick Grant started it in the lab, wrote a piece in the VIB, uh, being a gay man, going after our candidates, which uh, runs on MB, MSNBC in the evening. A lot of money get into that since the 16th on, so some, a lot of outside money coming from somewhere are running there, naming our candidate. But as for Tony Summers, that man has been vetted, questioned, vetted, questions, he, uh, and he has answered everything. This attack on him is, uh, they tried it on Mayor Osby Davis, unfortunately the LGBT community in Valeo, the one time in Valeo, attacked Osby Davis using these same tactics, and it didn't work. If you have a religious belief, you have a right to that religious belief. If you don't believe in religion, you have a right not to believe in it. And that's his religious belief, but it is not to put to death uh, uh, as being accused uh, uh, gays. It is not. And he's answered that question. His religious belief says they don't believe in certain things, but um, on the, uh, but you, you threw me up there, that's on the whole down. But he believes that gays have a right to associate, marry, and do what they want. He believes, he's told that a million times. Thank you. Thank you very much. And somebody, yes, somebody in opposition, please. I've been, I've been talking with Anthony Summers for years. Um, we actually went head-to-head uh, -head with him in front of the Vallejo School Board when he was actively working to dismantle an anti-bullying uh, proposal. So the video that he'd like to show where he was the MC of a forum, of a candidate's forum, and he told the gay man who was running for candidacy that he thought homosexuality was a very public sin. Um, at that time, in 2009, there was a, a girl, Rochelle Hamilton, in our school who was contemplating suicide. That contemplation of suicide is what led to an ACLU-mandated uh, implementation of an anti-bullying campaign in Vallejo, and he actively worked against that, and, and not only himself, but he was working with two other groups from, San Francisco, from uh, Sacramento. Capital Resource Institute and the Pacific Justice Institute, which are both very violent anti-gay lobbying groups. And um, you know, I had to work with the school board across the board, across the table with these people, and 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 have them in my face tell me that I just want to let you know that I uh, regularly preach against the evils of homosexuality from my pulpit, while he was supposed to be helping us craft a new bullying campaign. But in the, in the Times-Herald, he says, 
that I don't agree with same-sex marriage personally. That is his statement. In the questionnaire, he says, I am against abortion. I've been a Democrat for my entire life. My mother was a Democrat. My grandfather was on the uh, Democratic Central Committee for over 50 years. And, and, so, and so this is really anti-platform. It's anti-gay. And it, it really has to stop. Since my name has been mentioned many, many times. My name is John Riley. I'm the executive director of the Navasana Labor Council. I know a lot of you folks here from Contra Costa County because we've worked on coalition building in the past. This issue is not new. It gets drug out every two years. We need to start talking about the issue like adults and not throwing out these little bumper sticker catchphrases like Tony Summer wants to kill gay people. That's how conversations are being started in Vallejo on this issue right now. We had a great amount of success working together on the Jim Frazier campaign. That was because we sat down beforehand as Democrats and Labor. We looked at issues that we agreed on. We knew that there were candidates that were better on some issues than others, but we knew that we needed to win elections so that the majority of the democratic process, majority of labor issues were going to be represented. That's what we did in this case. We sat down with every single candidate that we interviewed. And it's all about process and participation. This issue was brought up two years ago. And yet I've been on the Democratic Central Committee now for two years as their board rep, and it was never brought in front of the body to, to, to talk about like adults. As far as the mailer, I'm part of a coalition that's made up of the Chamber of Commerce, the Board of Realtors, Police, Fire, the Billy Trades, the Central Labor Council, the Democratic Party, conservatives and progressives alike. And we're tired of the divisiveness. And the stuff that's been exhibited here, not here specifically, but in the city of Vallejo, is the reason why that coalition was formed and the reason why the list of endorsements is so long. We're tired of the divisiveness we want people that have the courage to sit down, like Jonathan Gordon, as soon as this issue came up. We sat down with Tony Summers for hours. Sat down with Michael Wilson and Tony Summers. The material advancements that the LGBT community has made over the last 10 years is not accomplished by divisiveness, it's accomplished by coming together and having conversations. Thank you. Yes? Um, this is all very interesting to me, but I'm not sure how this, what, are we looking for some outcome or how this is the result? As, as, as we discussed earlier in the meeting, there was, I had put in my report to five minute blocks, several people uh, suggested to me that uh, they weren't being represented by the people who were selected to speak, so they wanted an opportunity to speak as individuals. So they are doing so here now as just part of the process, as part of our being open to Democrats having a chance to speak their mind on a controversial issue. So they just want to be heard, they're not... The, the regional action. meeting cannot take any action on this. Thank you. Yeah, speaking of divisiveness, John Riley was a Republican three years ago. Never in my life, sir. And, and, he, and he put together this slate of candidates four of them. None of the four are necessarily in the best interest of the city of Vallejo. And then this morning, an email went out that the people that oppose his slate are bullies, that we are bullying. I am not a bully. I'm a Democrat. I've been a Democrat all my life. And we have a right to oppose what's going on here in our city. And that's what we're exercising today is our right. Any other speakers in support? Move to adjourn. Um, any, we want to give everybody a chance to speak. Someone asked you to withdraw. I'm not going to recognize that. Any other speakers in opposition? We have not had a chance to speak so far.
name is Paula Bauer. Most of you know me, a lot of you know me, and I just want to make a point, several points of order. Number one, there was a flyer passed out of a letter that I wrote that was in the Vallejo Independent Bulletin, and I wrote that as an individual, as a citizen of Vallejo and sort of Berkeley, but that's another story. I did not write that as the treasurer of the United Democrats, although it has been attached to my name on that letter. I was not speaking for the United Democrats, I was speaking for myself. The other point I would like to make is that we do not believe this process has been fair. I know from Dana, and I trust Dana, and I like Dana, but the process has not been fair to us. There has not been a true hearing. And this is just another example of it. Um, it's a quarter to four, and we were to be out of here 45 minutes ago, but we're going to squeeze in this little bit of extra time. And I don't think Susan Bonilla is even left in the audience, which was the whole point to come here to ask her to reconsider her endorsement. Um, that's all I want to say. Okay. Well, she wasn't in the room when I was speaking, so what am I supposed to say? Any other speakers in favor? Other speakers opposed? All in favor? Please come on. Uh, my name is Judith Lerner. I live in Vallejo, and I'm a school teacher. I teach right now at Hogan Middle School, and before Hogan Middle School was Hogan Middle School, was Hogan High School. And I've been a school teacher in Vallejo for um, about 15 years. And so I was really very involved in the anti-bullying stuff. It was vicious. It was vitriolic. It was horrible. I sat across the table from people who wanted me dead. I mean, really, who believed I would burn in hell, okay, and said so to my face. And, and these were the people that the school district brought to the table to try to craft an anti-bullying program that we were required to do because we lost a lawsuit because a student was bullied, not by other students, but by faculty and staff at high school. And I know the student, I knew her, she's a wonderful girl. And, um, you know, it's just unreal the kind of hatred that we faced. Vallejo is not ready for an elected official who doesn't believe that we need to fight this fight. Other places where they've done the fight, where people have their rights, we maybe can get to a place where people have that different view, but are willing to govern fairly anyway. The, the battle has been won, and they don't need to address this issue. This issue is current right now. The rights of gay and lesbian people is current right now. And we need people who are elected in our city who will take that fight on. Thank you. Others in support? Any others in opposition? There was that, no, you're in opposition, right? Yeah. Thank you. Well, my name is Rebecca Nord. I live in Glackerville. I'm not from Vallejo. I am a member of the Northern Solano Democratic Club. And I'm also on the planning committee for the Solano Democratic Women in Action. I was stunned when I learned of this endorsement. Basic bedrock values of Democrats are civil rights for everyone, equal justice for everyone. There are lots of things on which we can differ. It is a big tent. But the basic values are not something that with which we could differ. And there are basic values here in terms of a woman's right to choose, and in terms of uh, the equality of uh, gay and lesbian children and uh, gay and lesbian citizens. And those uh, have a history 
not of, not of talking, but of behavior uh, of this candidate, behavior, a recent history of behavior uh, that speaks against those basic democratic values. There are ways to, this was a mistake. This endorsement was really a mistake. There are ways to acknowledge that it was a mistake without attacking uh, Mr. Summers. Uh, we can recognize Mr. Summers for some of the good things that he did, but still, redor still rescind the endorsement. Thank you. Anyone to speak in support? Any others to speak in opposition? Can I speak in the middle? <laughs> sure. Can I say first, you suggest being approached by this? Sure. <laughs> so I'm actually um, wondering if you guys could inform me on the things that he's actually trying to run on. Like, what is he promising as his um, what he's bringing to the position. We, we, can, we, can, we can't answer the Q&A, but okay. after, well, I'm sure everybody will be happy to talk to you after that. Well, um, I, I guess I've heard that uh, on the fourth side of it, uh, there was the idea that he, you know they're working on him and we're trying to bring him to understanding these values in a better light. And um, from what I'm hearing on the opposite, it's that this endorsement was not made in a democratic way, and uh, obviously these two issues, um, these are really big issues for me too. I'm um, an outspoken ally of the LGBT community, and um, I guess, you know, I never really thought about it in a political sense until the issue of Prop 8 when I saw um, a rally happening the day afterwards, you know, with people just really, really crying out for this and like actually crying. It was the first time that a political issue like hit my heart and I like, I literally dropped to my knees for just watching them go and I, I just, it was so impactful for me. That was the first issue I became a part of before, you know, I got into environmental issues and everything like that and, um, and even before that I was, um, very passionate about women's issues and, um, you know, just the fact that we're still 23 cents away from real equity with how we're paying women compared to men. I, I think that these are not issues that we need to keep building people along to. Um, we need to work on getting people into these positions that are actually fully representative. We need more progressive people on these issues, not people that are still not there. Any other speakers to this time? Speaking. Yes. yes. Speaking against, okay. John Riley likes to paint this in a political light, but it is not that. This is a human rights issue. Last year, Anthony Summers made a movie with a guy named Ed Silvoso, who preaches that gay people are infested with demons, demons which need to be driven out. Mr. Summers could have made his movie without affiliating with Ed Silvoso. It's as simple as this. You have endorsed a candidate who has chosen to affiliate himself with a known hate group. That in itself is disturbing. But what's even more disturbing is that Mr. Summers doesn't seem to think that this is a problem. He feels he can associate with Ed Silvoso, who espouses this hate speech. And he feels that even though he's making a movie with the guy, that he can sort of have a cafeteria plan of the ideology. He likes the idea of praying over cities. He could have made his movie without affiliating with a hate group. What he's done is damaging and it's hurtful to my friends in the LGBT community and it, it pains me as a civil rights issue. It's as simple as that. Having someone like that representing my city is disturbing. Not to mention the fact that part of his doctrine, Dominionism, talks about the seven hills of dominion, the government being one of them. The indication being that Dominionism, that he is a, a devotee of, along with Ed Silvoso, is fundamentally opposed to the separation of church and state. He didn't need to associate with a hate group last year. 
I, if it was a long time ago, I might believe it, but this was last year. I have a problem with it. Thank you.